Hello and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to have a little look at George Orwell in Penguin Books. So uh, I've pretty much got every uh, Orwell iteration in first edition, uh, right back to the earliest uh, publications in 1940, uh, up through to the late 1960s. And we're going to have a look at all of those today. So he is one of my all time favorite authors. So I hope you're going to enjoy this one as much as I am. So sit back, relax. Don't forget to like and subscribe for future content like this. And let's get to it. So here we go then with the very earliest George Orwell book that Penguin published. And it's actually my favourite Orwell book of all the ones that he wrote. Um, Down and Out in Paris and London is my absolute favourite. Now this, uh, like all the penguins, is numbered. Uh, so in the main series, this is number 297. And uh, this one was published, as I recall, in 1940. So quite near the outbreak of uh, the Second World War. Um, this particular one is, is very tough to get hold of. Um, uh, I mean, it, it just is. This was the, on the edge of uh, paper rationing. It's not the scarcest um, Orwell to find in first Penguin edition. Um, however, it is um, it's going to take you some time to track a copy down. And if you find a really nice one, expect to pay up to about £50 for this. However, that's a snip compared to the uh, the actual first hardback edition, um, which will set you back a few thousand. Um, and I wish I had one of those. Uh, but alas, I don't. Um, but by and far um my favorite Orwell book um so much so in fact that um I've actually got and I'm going to show you these now um, I've actually got a couple of American editions as well um so this was uh published by Avon Books in the States T121 35 cents um and this copy came out in well dated 1933 which is when the hardback came out um no actual year by the look of it for this particular paperback edition but there is that one there by uh, Avon Books and then later on again Berkeley Medallion um, they published their edition of Down and Out in Paris and London and this one was 1959 I think this is slightly before that I would say it's perhaps because um, it mentions 1984 so I'm thinking around 1956, 1957 for this one. But although not strictly Penguin, I wanted to include those because, as I said, this particular book, um, I've liked it ever since uh, I first read it. And if you've never uh, tracked a copy down or read it yourself, I highly recommend it because it is a fantastic uh, Orwell book. Um, so about his experiences uh, as, a, as a down and out in both Paris and London, as the title suggests. Now, Penguin did a, a series called The Penguin New Writing, and this was um, a short story stroke essay anthology, had some uh, plays in it as well. And uh, this is uh, Penguin number 305. This is the very first volume of The Penguin New Writing, and they launched it. The very first story in the entire series, because it's around for over 20 years, was George Orwell's uh, essay, Shooting an Elephant. Uh, once again, quite a memorable um, uh, essay, this one. If you've never read it, once you have read it, you'll certainly not forget it in a hurry. Um, I recommend uh, tracking it down. This uh, particular book, not very hard to get hold of, um, although, um, you know, getting harder all the time. Also 1940. Um, you'll pick one of these up for, once again, about five or so, so not too bad. Now, the absolute scarcest of all the George Orwell's in Penguin book, particularly in first edition, is uh, a Burmese Days. And you can see my copy here is hardly in the greatest of shapes. Um, it took me a long, long time just to find one complete and intact. Um, now, it's uh, numbered in the Penguin series number 456. And this came out at the height of the Blitz. So you can see paper rationing was in full evidence by the low quality paper. 1944. Um, and uh, certainly paper rationing was uh, uh, a very big thing in, in Britain back then. And uh, that's why this one is, is so uh, scarce. The first print would have had a very, well, probably 30, 40,000, if that print run. And uh, consequently, copies are very tough to get hold of today. Um, 
out of all the uh, the penguin editions I'm going to show you, this is the one you're going to struggle with the most, just because it's so scarce. Um, I believe I've only ever seen maybe two for sale in all the years I've been collecting penguin books. Um, so a toughie. Then on to an absolute classic. So we've got Animal Farm, which is number 838. So this is obviously post-war now, and Penguin are in what I would call one of my favourite periods for them in the 1950s and 60s. The books are beautifully made. Um, there's no sign of paper rationing anymore. Um, these are just the additions to own, um, and I absolutely love them. Um, I've had numerous copies over the years, and usually the, they turn up quite damaged in 1951. So this is one of those books that, you know, once people have got a copy, they read it and read it and pass it on and it gets read and read. So um, really nice copies are quite tough to find. Um, I've had numerous through my hands of this and 1984. Um, and this is still the best copy I've had. And it's by no means perfect, um, but an absolute uh, fantastic novel. I mean, it doesn't take me to tell you how good this book is. Um, it's almost iconic, um, perhaps only beaten. Uh, by the next one in the series, which is, of course, uh, 1984. So Orwell's 1984 needs no introduction from me. It is um, a book that's become more and more relevant as time passes on. Um, the Penguin edition is uh, fantastic. Once again, it's that dream period when Penguin, I believe, were at their absolute peak for me. Uh, this one came out in 1954. Um, and as you'll see as we go through... Um, uh, Penguin certainly did this on Animal Farm. They they constantly gave it the treatment. They were updating the jackets. Um, and I believe Animal Farm and 1984 themselves have probably had at least 30 different jackets between when they were published and today, if not more. I mean, honestly, it's incredible. So I do have a few of the uh, related 1984 jackets for us to have a look at. So this is one that came out... Um, in the 1960s. Now let's have a little look here to be exact. This edition 1966 and um, the back cover actually says that the front cover shows a detail from the control room, Civil Defence Headquarters by William Roberts in the Salford Museum and Art Gallery. So that's quite in itself. This is an edition that a lot of people remember because Penguin used that um, illustration on quite a few different editions throughout the years and um, they rejacketed the entire Orwell line around this period because this is when they got around to publishing some of their later editions. So that's quite a nice 60s version and then we jump ahead to a version that came out just a few years back where um, the 1984 and George Orwell it's there but you can only see it sort of in a certain light it's sort of indented into the cover and this was released as a great Orwell. Um, and they did the, those four in the series. Now this one was published in, nine, in 2013. There we are. Fantastic. Lots of, uh, it's got Christopher Hitch in introduction in that one. And that is a really nice uh, addition to track down. Should you wish to, let's get these all in shot. Now, so this is just a little um, uh, booklet in a way, such such were the joys. Now, uh, Penguin are masters, absolute masters of mining their back catalogue. And um, this is one of the ones they did as part of their great ideas. Um, very easy to get hold of, and it literally cost 99p. So uh, not going to have much, uh, much trouble uh, getting hold of one of those. So now we're back onto the first editions again. So this is Penguin 1185 and it's uh, Selected Essays. And um, Penguin, uh, sorry, George Orwell was perhaps one of the greatest essayists of, uh, of his generation. And uh, certainly uh, they're so consumable. Um, I absolutely love them. And this is... Uh, Penguin's first sort of collection of Orwell's essays. They did lots of these in this series uh, by various authors. I know the H.G. Wells one's very good. Um, and this has got some of his better ones, including Inside the Whale. And of course, Shooting the Elephant again, which is uh, Shooting an Elephant, which is uh, one of his most famous ones. And uh, this particular anthology was published in uh, 1957. So that's Selected Essays. 
And then we're on to another Penguin original now. So this is coming up for up for air. This is number 1697 in the pain, main Penguin series. A bit of an interesting cover. Yeah, uh, gentleman with his bowler hat and like a think cloud there behind him. Um, and this particular copy was first published in 1962. So that's when Penguin first printed um, Coming Up for Air. This is a later edition, a late 60s copy, where for a little while Penguin put photo jackets on. So check with the bowler again, I guess it's supposed to be all well. Um, and uh, this one is now four and six, photo of all well on the back. And uh, this one was 1967, so this is uh, five years after the first edition. The next one, Keep the Asper Distra Flying. Um, a fantastic uh, cover there. Uh, Penguin used this sort of images of working class families um, uh, such as this um, quite often. And uh, Orwell seemed to fit uh, perfectly in that regard. Cover photograph by Roger Main. Um, I've got quite a few uh, Pelican books which have similar sort of um, uh, covers where um, Pelican look at um, urban housing and such like. Now this particular copy is quite interesting. It's got a little stamp from a bookseller in Amsterdam. Uh, it's number 1698 in the series. And um, this is actually the reprint for Keep the Abstra Distrifying. And this is number, so this is the reprint from 1965. And I do have this one here, which is a variation on the theme again. This is a similar sort of cover. And this one yeah, this is the first edition from 62. So that's the first. And then slightly redesigned the second edition from 65. All right. So let's keep the Aspidistra flying. One thing is, that is in my collection, it's a bit of an aside. Um, Penguin Mine in their back catalogue again. Um, a few years back, they, uh, they did this amazing series of mugs, 2005. I've got about 20 different mugs in the series. Um, they only did, as far as I know, the one George Orwell one, which is for 1984. Um, and I just thought I'd throw that in as a bit of uh, related memorabilia, as it were. So that's that. Now we're moving on to the next one, which is a homage to, uh, to Catalonia. And this is uh, Orwell's account um, as a militiaman uh, during the uh, Spanish Civil War, uh, just prior to the Second World War. And this in itself is quite galling. There's a lot of memorable passages in it. Um, and once again, it's well worth tracking, tracking a copy down. This first Penguin edition, amazingly, once again, didn't come out until 1962. Uh, quite an interesting uh, jacket on that one. That's the only copy of that one I've got. And then we've got the road to Wigan Pier. Uh, once again, a working class uh, sort of cover with the mine workers there. Um, not my greatest copy of this one, one I'm on, on the lookout to upgrade, but I've got an actual fact duplicates of all these um, Orwell books just in like reader editions. So copies that I can just read to death and uh, not have to worry about uh, collection copies. Um, as I said, down and out in Paris and London, I read virtually every year. It is a quick read in an afternoon, but it's so good. I can't pop it down. Um, number 1877 in the series, which is a clergyman's daughter. Uh, interesting jacket there. A cover designed by Fletcher, Forbes and Gill. So this is one of those perhaps design companies that Penguin employed in the late uh, 60s to do some of their jackets and get them all uniform under the uh, editorship of Tony Godwin. Um, this is uh, 1964. Clergyman's Daughter. Um, and this was the, the last of the, sort of the main series books, um, which is number 2297. And once again, this is um, a little compilation anthology of um, Orwell's essays, The Decline of the English Murder. And this particular one came out in 1965. Once again, it's a really, um, I've had several copies of this through my hands. This is one that's particularly hard to get hold of. Absolutely, uh, uh, 
I was going to say murder to get your hands on a copy. Uh, but there you go. It really is quite toughy. Now, um, before we go any further, then I've got just a few more bits to show you. So I'm going to make a little bit of room over here. Now, I've got this nice box set in my collection called The Best of Penguins. And the reason I've got it out is because, once again, um, well, it has got some classic penguins in it. Um, but it's also got um, a George Orwell. Um, so I'll just get this one out of the box for you to see. Um, so we've got the, uh, the Grapes of Wrath. There it is. Yeah, so it's another um, edition of 1984 with that same classic um classic cover on and this is um the first time i believe that 1984 was then published as a penguin modern classic this is an imprint that had only just sort of been around for a few years when these came out um this is on the cusp of um isbn so it's got 35 pence and seven shillings and this particular box set was 1971 so uh certainly um a fantastic little series this uh you had uh, passage to india there lord jim and uh, high wind in jamaica um really nice little box set there and uh, i do love the penguin modern classics a lot um and the early ones in particular i think are fantastic um yeah just for their cover design alone now the last thing i've got to show you um is this now Penguin uh, really embraced Orwell um, in this collection, which is a series of four books, and they collect all his, well, as it says, essays, journalism, and letters. Um, and they released them, uh, published them rather chronologically. So this first volume is 1920 to 1940. Now, this is also very early 1970s. Yeah, 1970, in fact, dead. And there were four volumes. So this is the first one. And these are highly, highly accessible because a lot of these are just, well, they're, they're just a few pages, um, a few pages of an essay. Um, you can easily pick it up, put down, and I guarantee you pick a couple up. If and When you do take a break, you can't stop thinking about what you've just read. And that, to me, is the sign of a great writer. Um, now, that's volume one. This is uh, volume two, which is... Um, my country right or left between 1940 and 1943 some of this includes uh, his work he did for the bbc volume three as i please and then finally volume four which is 1945 up until 1950 when uh, Eric Blair sadly passed away. And what a lovely set that makes. They really do. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking through those lovely George Orwell books as much as I did. Now, who else would you like to see me cover who's been published by Penguin in the future? So uh, I have got one planned with the Agatha Christie's that were published by Penguin, but there's dozens of other authors who might be of interest. So leave a comment below. Let me know who you'd like to see me uh, sort of specialise on in a particular video. Um, also, um, don't forget, if you did like this video, do hit that subscribe button for more content like this in the future. So until next time, thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.